Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of the Pursuing Truth Podcast. You know, each time we come together, our goal is simple. We want to dive deep into scripture and find those truths that we can apply to our daily lives. For as Jesus said, the truth will set us free. You know, one of the things I do uh, each evening, one of the little uh, activities I, I find myself involved in is I'll grab my cell phone and I pull up a news app. And this news app has uh, the major headlines of the day from multiple news sources. And it's just kind of a brain dump moment for me, right? Just kind of see what's going on in the world, take just five minutes, and then uh, go and retire for the evening. <laughs> I try to intentionally set myself up to be shocked before I ever pull up the app. It's like, I know that I'm going to see some things that are absolutely mind-boggling to me that our world is in such a shape. But yet, night after night, I find myself shocked all over again. I am surprised at just how chaotic our world really is. And perhaps that's why me and a whole lot of other folks have sleeping problems. Maybe we need to turn off the news app before going to bed. Here's what I know. I know that there is a lot going on in our world, and there's a lot of chaos. But I want to remind you that when our world is shaken, if we know the scriptures, here's what we know about our God. God isn't. When the world is shaken, heaven isn't. And I don't believe that God wants his people to be shaken either. I believe that we can go to his word and find a source of peace and truth and a different perspective on world affairs knowing that God ultimately is in control. The late pastor of Bellevue Baptist Church, Dr. Adrian Rogers, used to say, there are three categories of people on the earth. Those who live every day afraid, those who don't know enough of what's going on in the world to be afraid, <laughs> and then those who know their Bible. So if we know the Bible, then in essence, we can live our lives looking up, not looking around. When you go to the book of 1 Thessalonians in the Bible, the Apostle Paul is writing to some early Christians there in Thessalonica, a beautiful city in northern Greece, who were under incredible amounts of distress and pressure. And we all know what happens when your world is full of distress and pressure, right? After a while, you become depressed or disillusioned. And that's what the church condition was when the Apostle Paul wrote his two letters to the church. He wrote First and Second Thessalonians. You can find them there in the Scriptures. And when he wrote this, this, these early believers were literally in total confusion about the return of Christ. Partly, I would say, because Paul only was there, as far as we can tell through the book of Acts, about three weekends. Paul said he got to share with them on three Sabbaths, and then the community became so enraged at the Apostle Paul there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ that literally a riot came and ensued and ran Paul out of town. Now, here's what we need to do when we read the scriptures. We need to understand the context in which the letters were written, correct? So put yourself in the position of one of those early Thessalonian believers. You grew up in a pagan society. You hear this gospel being preached about Jesus Christ. You put your faith in Christ. The missionary who came to your town and preached the gospel of Christ that led you to faith in Christ in just three weeks is ran out of town, and now you're left in the city that just ran out the preacher, and you have this new faith in Christ, and you're trying to understand what just few sermons you were able to hear and to learn about Jesus. That's the condition. So as Paul, after Paul is gone, he gets word back that the Thessalonians had gotten very confused on the return of Jesus. Now, the Apostle Paul and the other prophets, we can see this all through Scripture, they preached on the imminent return of Christ. And that is, Jesus could come at any moment. No one knows the hour or the day. Even Jesus himself said that. In fact, he said, when people start saying, he's probably not coming, in an hour you think not, Jesus said, that's when the Son of Man will appear. And so he they were dealing with this issue of the imminent return of Christ. Now, where they got distorted was is they took the imminent return of Christ and tried to turn it into the immediate return of Christ in that they set times and dates. Historically, we can read that many believers in Thessalonica had ended up quitting their jobs and 
selling off their possessions. And there are some reports even that some went up to live on top of a mountain so they'd be closer to the clouds when the Lord returned. And so they were looking for it, him to come at that moment. And the problem was they stopped living in the process. They had given up on life. He's coming. Might as well just sell everything we have and just wait. Then some confusion came about to those who, in the new, this new faith, died, and they're still waiting for the rapture. And for some of the Thessalonian believers, evidently, they thought if you died before the immediate return of Christ, well, perhaps you would miss going to heaven or miss the rapture, this catching up. And so the Apostle Paul writes his letter, 1 Thessalonians, to clear up the matter and to encourage them that while they're waiting for Jesus to come, you can't stop living. In fact, now you need to be working more and loving at a greater sense of intensity than ever before. Because if we truly believe that Jesus is going to come again and receive his children to himself, then each day we wake up and every hour that we live, we need to be working the fields to share this message of hope with others who are living in distress. So look with me at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. Early in the introduction of this letter, the Apostle Paul writes these words. He says to these Christians, He is remembering your work produced by faith, your labor motivated by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Here are three famous words that the Apostle Paul will use not only in Thessalon Thessalonians, but he also will use it in the book of 1 Corinthians, right? Faith, love, and hope. Faith, love, and hope. And in essence, Paul says, we need to have our faith working. And we need, as we're working our faith, we need to be motivated by love. Now, what keeps us working and loving, Paul says, we endure with our hope. What hope? The hope that Jesus Christ will come again. And that when he comes, he will deliver us from the wrath and the judgment that is coming. In fact, look down in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, down at verses 9 and 10. He backs this thought back up. Paul writes, For they themselves report what kind of reception we had from you, how you turned to God from idols. That's putting their faith to work. How you're serving the living and true God. That's motivated by love. They're serving the Lord who loved them, right? And you're waiting for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. There's the hope. Paul says, I want you to live in light of this hope. In fact, this hope that Jesus is coming to deliver us from the coming wrath is to be the fuel which energizes our faith to be working and our love to be motivated to push us forward and share Christ with those around us. Paul picks back up on this at the end of this first letter toward the end in chapter 5, we read in verse 8 and 9 and following, but since we, will, since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled and put on the armor of faith and the armor of love and the helmet, the hope of salvation. There's faith, hope, and love again. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we're awake or whether we're asleep, and that's a, that is a direct uh, comment toward those who had died in their faith. Paul called them sleeping, not dead. That whether we wake or we're asleep, we may live together with him. And then notice verse 11. Paul says, therefore, encourage one another with these words, as you have already been doing. So the Apostle Paul is writing to these believers who are living under great stress and persecution. Their world was in chaos, just like ours is today. And Paul says, I know you're wondering about the coming of Christ. The Lord will come one day, and he'll deliver us from the wrath coming. 
But until that day comes, let that hope that you have, that one day Jesus is coming again, fuel your hope to lead you to work. Put your faith to work. Let love be your motivation. Let us love others with the same love we've received from Christ. Let us extend grace, the same level of grace that we ourselves desire from the Lord. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if God would do that for us, then while we wait for him to come and deliver us from the wrath to come and take us to his presence, let us, let that love motivate us to put our faith to work and share the good news of Christ with our circles of influence, with those who are around us. So that's my challenge today. In the hope that one day Jesus will come and he will deliver us from the wrath to come, live in that hope. But don't be always looking around. Look up where your help comes from. And as you're living in that hope, let that hope you have fuel your faith to get to work in God's kingdom. Get to work in your city, in your community, in your neighborhood, and in your family. Be motivated by the love of Jesus. Right now, it's time to shine the love of Christ to those around us and to put our faith to work while we wait for Jesus to come again. Amen? Well, I hope this little message was a word of encouragement, too. If it was, do me a favor, hit the like button and the share button and uh, subscribe to this channel so that you never miss our, our little messages that we bring out to you to give you a word of encouragement. Because here on Pursuing Truth Podcast, our goal is to dive deep in Scripture and live by the truth, for the truth will set us free. God bless you.